Dance Boys, you can hear what he has to say. His name is Dance Boy, he thinks the world is all over. Well, the Nets just can't play. What up, Nets fans? Nets Boy here. Bring your latest and your really, really, really good Brooklyn Nets news. All right, let's go dive right in. Uh, it's been a while since my last Boy Nets Boy episode. But, like always, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, but it, it, it's, been, it's been a while. But it's been a really good stretch of games lately for the Nets. And and we're going to go over a lot of things in this episode. So let's dive right in. Since my last episode, the Nets are currently, uh, one, two, three, are currently four, no, five and two. The last seven games since my last episode. That's how long it's been. It's been five episodes. I mean, excuse me. It's been five, uh, seven games since my last episode. The Nets had a very good win against the Grizzlies. They beat the Bulls like they should have. Uh, they took care of the Hawks at home, a uh, game I went to, and that was a really frustrating game. Then they had two really, really good wins against the Celtics, and then most recently, that great overtime thriller against the Rockets, which I'll also talk about. Um, a lot to go over. Let me just start off by saying that the Nets are uh, are at 500. They're 23-23, and 23, and... They finally got there, and they've been flirting with it for a while now, and they finally got there, and I am ecstatic. And, and it's fantastic. This is, this is beyond what even I'm expecting at this point. Remember, the expectations are raised with this team. I talked about that last episode, but now they're a 500 team. And the way I'm looking at this now is this is the new beginning point. Let's treat this like it's a new season if you're the Nets and you're a Nets fan. That it's 0-0, they're 500. From this point on, we should see what this team can do. If this team can play, key stay, get over 500 and then stay over 500. Because I don't want them to ever drop under 500 again. And the next couple stretch of games, which is something else I'm going to go over later on in the video, they really should build from here. So you're at a brand new point, Nets. Let's build. So let's just start off by just talking about the last stretch of games. Um, and just talk about the demeanor that this team has. Um, at the Hawks game, which I went to, um, the, there was just a sense that this Nets team is good. Like, they were down by 20 points or 19 points in that first half, in that first quarter, the Nets were. And the thing that was weird was, even though they were down, it just never felt like that they were going to lose that game. Like, I was watching it, I was there with my family, and I'm just there, and I said to him, I said, it's weird. In the past, under these circumstances, against a team the Nets should be better than, when they're down by, you know, 20 points, I always had this feeling of, it's over, it's over. I didn't have that feeling that game. And sure enough, the Nets ended up storming back, especially in the third quarter, and ended up winning by, like, 16 points. And it was incredible. And that's the biggest difference between this Nets team and Nets teams of the past. There's this demeanor, there's this sense of, talent you know there's a sense of wait a minute this is actually a good team this is actually a team that can actually perform and and and, and beat teams that are significantly worse to them like the atlanta hawks the hawks are one of the worst teams in the nba and they played like it and the nets played like a playoff team so that's the first thing to take away through these stretch of games that the nets have done is just the simple fact that they have this demeanor and then we saw more of that later on against the game against the Celtics and later against the Rockets. They now feel like they belong against these teams. These are playoff teams. The Celtics are a championship. Both those teams are championship aspiration teams. Um, and the Celtics are expected to be one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. And they figured it out. And the Nets were able to beat them. After they lost to them first time they played them. But that was expected. Second game on a back-to-back -back in Boston. Like, come on. But the next game around, when they played them, they were able to out-hustle and outperform them. Yes, I know. Kyrie Irving didn't play in that game. So, and the Rockets game, there was no Chris Paul, no Clint Capella. So, maybe I don't want to get too much ahead of myself in saying that the Nets are at the same level of those teams, because they're not. But, they're still doing what they're supposed to do. They're still winning the games they should be winning. And that's what happens. They should be beating the Hawks. They should be beating the Bulls. They should be beating the Celtics when they don't have Kyrie Irving. They should be beating the Rockets when they don't have Chris Paul or Clint Capella. And they are. And that Rockets game, now I'm going to go to that game. That was that was great. And I'm going to be honest. I thought the Nets were, I thought it was over. I had already said the Nets, it's over. They're not going to win this game. They put up a good fight. But James Harden is just too much James Harden. And it's, it's, it's over. Good work. You know, hard fought Nets, road game. Whatever. Let's focus to the next game. But then Spencer Dinwiddie, who's been struggling like there's no tomorrow, just 
takes over the game. And I just want to say one thing. The Nets are getting a little bit more respect these days. Just, just a little bit. But they are still getting no real respect. Do you know what everyone was talking about from that Nets game against the Rockets? It wasn't the fact that Spencer Dinwiddie single-handedly won the game for the Nets towards the end, or that Jared Allen had his first career 2020 game, or that, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, Graham, uh, Tavion Graham had a career-high 20-something points. No one talked about that. No. No one talked about the fact that the Nets were down by uh, 10 points with like three minutes to go and came back to tie the game, and they were down by seven with a minute and a half to go in overtime and won the game. Nobody talked about that. No one talked about Dinwiddie's performances down the stretch, scoring 33 points and taking over, hitting, making three huge three-point shots at the end of regulation to, to send it to overtime. No one talked about Dinwiddie's game-winning shot where he got fouled in the end one. No one talked about Jared Allen's double-double, 24 points and 20-something rebounds. Uh, uh, no one's talked about Tavion Graham's career-high 20-something points. No one talked about that. They said, oh, the Nets... They're playing well. Great performance by that. No, the talk is James freaking Harden and his 58 points. Okay, yes, good for you, James Harden. You shot 34 shots. You made 16 of them. You shot 47%. That's okay. But you were 5 for 16 from 3. So you weren't even shooting. No, worse than that. It was 5 for 19 from 3. Or 6 for 19. Or something like that. You shoot under 30% from 3. And you still lost the damn game. So why are we all, but all they were talking about, all ESPN was talking about, all the coverage was talking about, was James Harden scored 58 points. The first time since Wilt Chamberlain that a single player had back-to-back 50-point games. Good for you! Who cares? You lost the game. And that, to me, is just big slap in the face. Yes, James Harden should get props that, hey, you're the only one on the team right now, James Harden, because Chris Paul is out and Clint Capella is out. Who else is on that team? Eric Gordon, yeah, okay, but he just came back from injury. That's his first game back. I'm going to be honest. I'm expecting James Harden to score 50 points in that game because there's no one else on that team who could do anything else. Who, Austin Rivers? No, what? what? Gerald Green? No, no. Like, in all seriousness, that to me should not have been the main story. Yes, it's impressive. Yes, he deserves accolades and, and respect. But that's all they were talking about. Nobody else was talking about how the Nets were down by 10 points with less than three minutes to go and stormed back. No one was talking about Jared Allen's first career double 2020. Like, no one was talking, no one's talked about this Nets team that has tied for the best record in the NBA since December 7th. They are 15 and 5 their last 20 games. No one's talking about that. It's, oh, good job with the Nets. They're playing well. They're playing good basketball. They play hard. But that James Harden, he scores those 58 points. He's amazing. Come on. That is terrible. That is disrespectful to the fullest. And I understand it because, once again, oh, the Rockets, James Harden, MVP. They're the most big championship team. The Nets, oh, they're just oh, the Nets. You know, there's still this condescending tone that everybody has with the Nets. Oh, how wonderful. You're 500. Oh, you're playing good basketball. Oh, that Dinwiddie, he's a he's a good guy. Oh, that D'Angelo Russell, he looks like he's good. Oh, Joe Harris, oh, you're second in the league in three-point percentage. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, Jared Allen. Oh, Jared Allen, you only have blocked LeBron James, Blake Griffin. Uh, 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 uh. He blocked James Harden as well that game. You only blocked Carmelo Anthony way back in the day. You only blocked LeBron. You blocked, you know, you're just, you're just, you're just a good little athletic player. You're, you're, you're so good. Tavion Graham, you're almost a nobody. You scored those 20 points. How nice. Like, that's the feel this Nets team is still getting. And that is disrespectful. And I think, hopefully, after that Rockets game, they're finally getting the level of respect they deserve. But no, nope, no, nope, the talk was still James Harden and his 58 points. Maybe it will change moving forward if the Nets go on a nice little streak here some more. I mean, everyone's saying Brooklyn Nets are a tough team. They are they play hard, blah, blah, this. But no one's taking them seriously. And look, I'm not going to stand here and say you should take them seriously. But give the team props. Give them props for coming back on the road against Houston, against James Harden's great performance. Give them props about beating the teams they should be beating, like the Celtics. Yes, no Kyrie Irving. But they took advantage of that. Yes, I mean, 
give them props that they erased a 19-point deficit against the Atlanta Hawks. Yes, it's the Hawks, but they eliminated a 19-point deficit. This condescending feel that this team gets is wrong, and it's time for that to change. So, moving forward, it, it, it's up to the Nets to change the narrative, and it starts now, starting with uh, the next game, Friday's game, against, against the uh, Magic. Winnable game. They got a lot of winnable games next, next up. All right, they got to beat the Magic. All right, and then they got the Kings in Barclays Center. Got to beat the Kings. Kings have been a pleasant surprise as well, but I think they're better. Then I got the Magic again in Barclays Center. Winnable game. Then I got the Knicks in Barclays Center. The next four games, the Nets should win. They should go 4-0 and oh the next four games and go four games over 500. And then they got the Celtics again, and that's going to be a tough game, but they beat them once before, so let's see what they can do. And then they got the Bulls, another winnable game. And then they got the Spurs. Okay, Spurs could be a loss. So the next six games, seven games, they should win at least five of the next seven games. And that is what I'm expecting moving forward. The next seven games, they should win five of the next seven, and they should be three games over 500 at that point, and they should build from there. They should build from there. Because, I mean, this is the stretch. This is what they need to do. And maybe, maybe they'll start getting a little bit more respect. Because guess what? They got the Magic again after that. Then the Bucks come to town. I'm going to try to go to that game. I don't know. I mean, they don't have an easy schedule, but I believe that this Nets team can beat anybody now, the way they're playing. And I really do believe that. And I think as long as they continue to beat the teams that they should be beating, they're going to end up probably winning 45 to 48 games. I'm being dead serious. If they beat the teams that they should be beating the rest of the season, they'll be 45 to 48 wins. They really should. They really should. I mean, I can, like I said, I can briefly just look at the schedule. I already count those five games. They should beat the Bulls. That's six. Cavaliers, seven. Hornets, eight. Wizards, nine. Hornets, again, ten. Heat, I think they're better than, so that's 11. Mavericks, 12. Cavs, again, 13. Hawks, 14. Pistons, 15. Kings, 16. Uh, well, then I go through a tough stretch. Six, six, 16 more games. Maybe a little bit more. 16, 17, 18 more games. 16, 17, 18 more games. I expect them to win. 18 more games at 23. Okay, that puts them at exactly 41 wins. So they should be over 500. But my point is they should be now moving forward considered to be a better team. And we'll see what happens moving forward. All right? So we'll see if this team can continue to, to, to build and continue to play the way they've been playing. And let's see if they get some damn respect. Because I'm finally now respecting them. All right? I'm believing in this team. I'm believing that this team should be in the playoffs. And now I believe they should be over 500. I believe they should finish the season 41 to 45 wins anywhere from there because that's the way they make that's the expectations I've given this team now so that's what I believe before I said expectations were making the playoffs now my expectations is finishing the season over 500 because they got there yes it's going to be tough I know it's not going to be an easy stretch but I still believe that they should finish with 18 more wins the rest of the season and like I said that will put them at exactly 41 wins so if they do better than what I expect they should be over 500 so there you have it. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys think the Nets are really still not getting the respect they deserve. Um, let me know what you guys think about that great comeback win. Let me know what you guys think about what the new expectations are of this team. If you agree with me that a, 40, that a 500 record should be attainable moving forward. So keep your eyes open for the next Nets Boy episode. And until then, this is Nets Boy signing off.